Have you ever realized your gut influence, full of potential, and how much it will impact the marginalized communities that surround you? Have you ever dreamed of being a social hero and using your weapon of hope, or remedying injustice that has taken deep root in our society? Greetings. I am Jay Kim, a 10th grade Korean student studying in Indonesia. Today, I will unravel to you how my experience of social actions concretized my aspiration to become an ophthalmologist who types hope and develop global citizenship through social converging. First, what is global citizenship? Is it even an existent concept? Well, to answer that question, I will share a personal anecdote of mine. Recently, from the 18th to the 27th of January, I joined the 20th training program on the United Nations and its Sustainable Development Goals, which was a pedagogical program that was located in the United Nations headquarters in New York. And on the last day of the program, Eun Hee Jung, the director and founder of Eveka International Virtual Schooling, led a passionate lecture on global citizenship and what it takes to truly deserve that name tag. Global citizenship is a powerful tool consisting of three main domains: one, cognitive; two, socio-emotional; and three, behavioral. The UNESCO states that global citizenship is a powerful tool that equips us with the ability to embrace our identity and heritage, but at the same time, transcend the cultural differences that have segregated us for such a long time. Eun Hee Jung stated that yes, global citizenship is based on these three values, but that's not all to it. What puts global citizenship into life and into action is a value point. A value point is like the final destination in our global citizenship journey, and is also the starting point. By pinpointing a value point and putting it into action, we can elucidate global citizenship into life. And perhaps the very first stage that could be putting yourself outside of your comfort zone. That is why last summer. I decided to do a volunteer work at Samyuk Medical Center, South Korea, for two weeks. As you can see here, I did quite a lot of things in the span of two weeks. Arriving at the hospital, my first day started with getting lost in a maze of wheelchairs. Everything was such a hustle and bustle, full of worried guardians' sighs and children's cries. Amid the frontline chaos, my main job was being an interpreter for foreign patients and guiding in their healthcare. My first start wasn't that perfect, of course. I was only able to make desultory efforts, and I struggled to even get used to the geography of the hospital. But just as the saying "mankind is an adapting animal," I eventually got myself into the swing of things. During the 10 minutes of free time I had after each lunch break, I encountered a magical scene. Through the hectic movements of physicians and nurses, patients and guardians, I spotted an unflagging source of hope and desire. It was the yearning for more time with our loved ones and the sincere effort to heal and care for patients. These guileless intentions and fervent emotions immediately rejuvenated me to get back to where I was, persevere in my pursuits, and strengthen my passion towards medicine. Thanks to the eager hospital that didn't treat hospital volunteer work as just a simple sign of service, I found myself working tirelessly for eight to ten hours each day, engaging in activities that lie far beyond my comfort zone. Such as assorting medicine in the department of pharmacy, inputting results of patients' eyesight tests in the department of ophthalmology or eye health that I earnestly aspire to work in, guiding a group of foreign patients' health medical checkup, and even joining a medical fair outside of the hospital as part of their public relations team, guiding in patients' and visitors' free stress tests. 
This experience served as a testament to me on volunteer work and the importance and the impact it can have on our communities. As I discovered the positive perturbation that I could implant in every patient, and how every patient had their own stories and ways of life, I was able to develop global citizenship on a next novel. What the two weeks full of service and countless nights without sleep equipped me with was an academic validation or exhaustion. It was one single thing: global citizenship. One to know in the cognitive domain, as I constantly updated my knowledge and searched up things that I was unsure of. Two. To be and to live together in the social-emotional domain, as I constantly commuted with patients and reflected on the mistakes that I made. Three, to do in the behavioral domain, as I altruistically and passionately continued on with my volunteer work journey throughout the two weeks of time. Global citizenship is an integral part of me that builds me and my virtue. It allows me to sew pieces. And bits of my social actions and experiences, one by one, to form one solid puzzle of my persona. To be honest, I did go through some wondrous toils to be able to stand here and confidently tell you the course of life that I pursued and want to pursue in the future. In the summer of 2020, I donated 350 handmade mask necklaces and face masks to the school when COVID was at its peak. Aiming to be able to divert the notorious aftermaths of the pandemic, I also donated the thousand-dollar prize money that I won from winning the first place in the hundred years of Koreans' immigration to Indonesia UCC video contest. About an year and a half after that, I was able to publish my very first children's storybook. It was titled "The Rolling Nags." Talking the story of a young boy finding the true value of familyhood through an adventure, I donated 500 hard copies of this book to schools, local libraries, and communities, tackling the problem of the lack of literacy education in the most shadow communities. And finally, after my strenuous journey of writing and writing and writing and writing. I was finally registered as an official children's storybook writer last summer, when I won the grand prize of the fourth Melty Creative Writing Contest, and donated the prize money of four thousand dollars. However, this course of donation to me wasn't just a showy attempt to shine my resume or social reputation. As I continued on with my global citizenship education journey, I encompassed myself in the realm. The realm of a marginalized society that we live in, where persecuted minorities, let alone being the tools to thrive and succeed, are not even placed on the same starting line. Realizing how I could give a lending hand for these communities to regain their wind, that was solely enough to satisfy my goal. Social converging. Is all about global citizenship. After two years of the pandemic, our society is shifting to now greet the new normal era. There are more people who are starting to take off their masks, and people treat social distancing as a long black past now. Social converging, which is a neologism that I came up with, indicates healthy social interaction that crosses the border between online and offline. Appearing in distinct forms like cordial conversations, bustling parties, and lively group chats, social converging is all about spreading good influence as a global citizen yourself and with your community. What makes a TEDx speech prominent to me isn't just a solely eloquent oratory or a vociferous performance; it is the sincerity that underlies in its nexus. Similarly, what makes a global citizenship truly one is the sincerity that emanates from their circular mindset. What is a circular mindset? I'm pretty sure many of you are quite confused, and I completely get that. Well, but what if I connect it to a circular economy? 
A circular economy is a newly rising concept in industries where resources and waste materials are regenerated and reformed at the end of their first lives. A circular mindset is very similar to this. Our ideas, visions, ambitions, and even failures, they are reformed and regenerated at the end of each and own chapter of our lives. Now that we have grasped the concept of social converging and global citizenship, we can apply that to build a relevant, a resonant, and a radiant persona. First, to know, tackle the cognitive domain by conducting a messy research and brainstorming. This can range from perusing simple Instagram posts and social media posts to deciphering the most convoluted research papers you can ever find on the internet. The messier it is, the better. Second, tackle the social-emotional domain by to be and to live together. There is one answer. Debate. Debate against yourself to find the weak spots of your argument and strengthen them. Debate against your own stances to view topics and ideas through a more flexible window of perspective. Debate against opposing stances to fortify your arguments and develop a fortress of accurate and cogent information. Third, to do in the behavioral domain. Start doing, not just thinking about it. Put social convergence into action. Analyze your working habit and reform your failures so that you can start again. Yes, failure does hamper you. Failure is terrible. Failure is horrendous. But it does not mean that failure brings a dead end to your life. Remember, with a circular mindset, a failure or an end to one chapter of our lives can be the starting point and the opening to another chapter of our lives. Lastly, throw yourself this one question. Are you a global citizen? Not just for the sake of academic validation or social reputation, but for yourself. Are you a global citizen? Have you been relevant, resident, and radiant enough to proudly call yourself a global citizen? Well, to be honest, I myself do not know the exact same answer to this question, because after all, I'm just a 15-year-old standing on the stage hoping that my words will reach someone with a single weapon, ambition. Today, I stand here on the stage hoping that my words will plant a single seed of hope and imagination to someone out there, just as the stage that I'm standing right now was once a dream for young me who was sitting on the front row of TEDx Youth at SWA, giving all ears to the amazing speeches and lectures. I want to share the power of strength and perseverance, of the arduous journey it takes for one seed of imagination to grow, to bloom, to flourish, and to come to fruition. How triumphing over the trials and tribulations of our life elucidates our dreams and goals into one fine line. As we practice social converging into our very own lifestyle, we can become alchemists and scientists of our very own academics, hobbies, virtues, ambitions, failures, ideas, whatever that is. With a never-draining fortitude and an indefatigable spirit of the times, we can elicit the most latent faculties to cross borders of differences and ultimately, achieve what seems impossible. Thank you.